Hi there, I'm Deb Bentley. I'm the curator and collections manager at the Pippin Museum in Prescott, Arizona, Art and Heritage of the American West. And I'm here today with Bonnie Adams Freeman, who is Ken Freeman's wife. And we're here at the opening of Portraits of the West, a wonderful show that's opening tonight and will continue through October 24th here at the museum. So Bonnie, how do you feel about today's events? And we, we walked our docents through today and uh, we have some really wonderful key images that you can tell us about, so. Well, thank you, Deb. I'm very happy to be here and as the curator of the Kenneth M. Freeman Legacy Collection, this is a wonderful venue for the world premiere Absolutely. of the Portraits of the West. Now, Ken was a portrait painter. It didn't matter if Ken was painting a portrait of a beautiful woman, uh, uh, old uh, rodeo cowboy rodeo cowboy <laughs> or a cow uh -huh. he painted their portrait so thus the name portraits of the west and Perfect. we have some beautiful images the lead image for this exhibition is bronc buster oh it's a great image we love and, it and uh, the story behind bronc buster is ken painted a model named jim lyles and mm -hmm. he painted him several times and he is bronc buster and you know when i spoke to jim a little while ago i he said, you know, when he painted Bronkbuster, that was really me. He said, that was the best portrayal of me anyone has ever done. Well, he definitely looks like the rough and tumble cowboy that he was, well, I rough guess. rough and tumble, and uh -huh. he's been hurt a few times. Yes. He's retired now. He doesn't ride Bronk anymore, mm -hmm. but he does make safety equipment to, for the riders, but also for the animals. Isn't that a marvelous way to take his skills and knowledge and then translate them into ways to help others that are working still in the rodeo community? Uh, and right here at the, in Prescott, Arizona right now, we have the world's oldest rodeo going on. Uh, and that is a wonderful tradition here in Prescott. And there's a painting called Psyching Up that I think really plays well to the rodeo times that we have going on here right now. It does. If you've ever been to the rodeo and you stand, you're in the stands and you're watching, you may not have an appreciation for what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But those guys, before they get on their, on their ride, they have to really psych themselves up. They have to go through a lot of mental exercises to prepare to get on that ride, the bronc, the, the bareback, whatever they're doing, because they may not get off. Sure. They, they, may, they, they may get severely Im injured, they may die. Or right. at least they may not win. Or they may end their you rodeo know. career that night. It, yeah, it, that's, could, it uh -huh. could end that quickly. So sure. there's a lot to that. You know, Psyching Up is, is a sister, what I call a sister uh, uh -huh. painting, to the lead image of the other exhibition, which is called Artists at Work. Mm -hmm. The lead image to that one is called Tough Draw, which is a rodeo rider. Uh, he's drawn his bronc, but his bronc, and it's a mean one. Yes, and he's wearing like the American flag shirt. I think oh, that's that a one, really great. That that's one a great is a one too. One, yes, uh -huh. that I love that. Eight Seconds to Glory. Uh -huh. Eight Seconds to Glory is a marvelous. That's picture. awesome painting. Yeah, mm -hmm. but here at the Fippin, um, you have some real, real gems. We got John Wayne. Yes, we do. We have. Uh, we actually we have one of uh, George Fippin's portraits of the Alamo, which features John Wayne. And right on the other side of the wall, we have Ken Freeman's portrait of John Wayne. So it'll be interesting to have folks uh, look at the two of them and compare the two of them because I think George Fippen really would have appreciated the classical way that Ken painted uh, because George was always looking to learn things from other painters. And uh, I think that is especially shown in the studio replica here where we have his last painting that he was working on, Impending Decision. And there's an underpainting that he did. We actually had like, uh, he drew on canvas, which I think is really amazing. A lot of artists will do drawings to work up to doing the actual painting uh, separately. But Ken Freeman actually drew on the canvas and then did a brown tone underpainting that showed all the values. And then he added the color to it. Mm -hmm. And I think impending decision really shows that process really well here in the replica that we have here at the Fippen. And this, this uh, painting in the replica was mm -hmm. the last painting that Ken was working on. Yes. And uh, it's interesting that he chose to paint Impending Decision 4. This was his mm -hmm. favorite image. And I don't know, I think he knew what he was doing when he left a complete story of how he 
painted in mm -hmm. that one image. Absolutely, I it, think he did. It, he painted everything. Everything he did, he painted three times. So that mm -hmm. he went to the canvas, three different technique, uh, three different steps to the canvas every time. <laughs> the drawing, the undertone, where he made all his changes. Right. And he always used burnt umber. Mm -hmm. and well, that's the classical the way to do it. And he was called the Rembrandt of the Rodeo. Yes, as well, he was. So. He was. Uh -huh. Some so. European artist uh, visitors uh, one day uh, visited Scottsdale and went to some of the galleries where Ken had his mm -hmm. work, and they said, this man paints like Rembrandt, but his content is Western America. Absolutely. And so that's how he got that name. <laughs> oh, that's wild. We also have some really interesting things in the studio replica here. I mean, let's talk a little bit about the Beetle pendant. I think that's a, a kind of a fun story about Ken's early days in his career. Don't well, you? For, for fun. For fun. For fun. <laughs> Ken uh, was in the rock and roll industry when it first started. He was he was cutting records and managing some R&B mm -hmm. groups and some of the early. He he brought some of the early early. Um, Rock and rock, roll, rock and yeah. roll people uh, to his little teen nightclub. Well, it wasn't little. It was actually pretty big. It was called uh -huh. the Pink Fink. Yeah, I love the name. Uh, on the west side of Chicago, and there were no kids on the street uh -huh. in, on, on Saturday night because they were all at the Pink Fink. Uh -huh. And where Ken brought, do you remember Janice Joplin? Absolutely. Well, he. I'm from Texas, honey. <laughs> he had her in there before <laughs> she was anybody. Yes. And the turtles. Absolutely. And he even uh, he he had a. I just found a contract for the Yardbirds. Oh, how funny. <laughs> oh, great. I remember <laughs> that group. working with sure. them. But it, it's really great, too, that he, uh, it, it was concerning to Mayor Daly that all the kids were off the street. Yes, he like, they must have been uh, up to no good, but in fact, Ken was keeping them safe and sound. They were just <laughs> listening to rock and roll and enjoying themselves. And there's also a really great picture in here of, uh, of Ken with Jesse Coulter in a, a painting that he did on commission. So can you talk a little bit about that process? And that what was he a did? beautiful, yeah. beautiful project. Uh, in 2003, Ken painted Waylon Jennings' portrait, and Jessie is Waylon's wife. She was doing a commemorative album, and so he did the painting of Waylon, a full-color painting with his, his favorite guitar at a favorite time in his life from a black-and-white blown-out photograph. He looked through some family albums to get general um, clothing Mm -hmm. You know, she chose the clothing and, and, and to get an idea what the rest of the face should be. And, and he painted Waylon exactly. And uh, she would come over to the house and she would stand right behind his chair mm -hmm. and watch over him as, as he was painting. And she cried because... Oh, because she missed him. Well, she missed him and she saw him coming to life again Absolutely. right there in front of her. Yeah. I used to see them perform together at Armadillo War Headquarters in Austin, Texas when I went to school. I mean, they were really a great couple. Great but couple. It's also another great couple here is we have a, a drawing of Ken and Bonnie that Ken was starting a portrait of them and we have another photograph of them. And John Singer Sargent was a, a big influence on Ken's painting and of course he's one of the American great painters. Um, in the world, and we also have a couple of magazines that uh, that Kim was featured in, plus some uh, paintings that were in various stages when he passed on. Uh, we also have something that was very special to Ken. Ken called himself a Jewish cowboy because he was a Jewish boy from Chicago who had the cowboy spirit, and he had these two wonderful wonderful paintings of the rabbis and some of the elders in the church and one is called morning prayer and the other one is called tradition so it's really great to have those celebrated here uh, because we really care about cultural diversity here at the FIPA museum because art and heritage of the american west is very important to us and we know that that the heritage of the West was created by all different cultures, by the Asian Americans who helped build the, radio, the, the railroad, by the Buffalo soldiers who took care of all of the different pioneers. And we also have one of our favorite Buffalo soldiers in the replica as well, Sergeant Major Bill. We're very happy to have him back in the museum. So, did you know that Ken was uh, uh, I soldier. did. He was a captain, he was a right? Captain of the Buffalo uh -huh. yeah, that was right. great. How did he uh, get involved with that? I know it's that he's a he really and, fun yeah. story. Huh. Sergeant Major Bill, who uh -huh. the painting up here, is a truck driver, uh -huh. and he would stop at all the truck tri tr truck stops on his way back and forth from work. And in in a lot of them, impending decision, the print of impending decision was on the walls, uh -huh. and he fell in love with impending decision. So then one year at the Festival of the West, West, the National Festival of the West in Scottsdale, he saw impending decision hanging in one of the artist's booths. And he saw this artist, he said he, he called him this, this little um, city cowboy, 
Because <laughs> Ken had on a leather jacket, a fancy leather jacket, boots, and he had on a very fancy straw hat. And Ken was shorter than Sergeant Major Bill, so he called him little. Well, Sergeant Major Bill's really He's tall. He's really I, tall. I stood That's next right. to him. <laughs> so anyways, he went over there to tell, uh, tell this guy, what are you doing with that image? You know, you shouldn't steal the artist's image. Well, to his big surprise, it was the artist. I meet the artist, <laughs> And yes. they got to know each other right away. And, oh, that's and, great. And Ken really helped Sergeant Major Bill um, get into his, his role as the historian for the 9th Cavalry Memorial, Arizona Memorial Buffalo Soldiers. Well, it was wonderful. We had some of Ken's Buffalo Soldier work featured here at an earlier show we had last year called Buffalo Soldiers, Vaqueros, and Friends. And uh, it was really nice. That's actually where I got to talk to Ken. I called up after seeing an image of Sergeant Major Bill and spoke to Ken, and he had just come back from Milan in his one-man show. He was so happy about how that show had gone, and he was very excited to be shown here at the Pippin because he actually has been one of our booth artists in our annual Memorial Day show. Uh, so Ken knew all about the Pippin, and he was very excited to be featured in a show here. So uh, it's great to have him back here. And we've got, we are surrounded in this museum right now by portraits of the American West. And we hope that you folks will take, your, take some time and come out to Prescott, Arizona in the beautiful Granite Dells and come visit the Fippin uh, because this show will be here until October 24th.